We must live within our means, pay down our debts, and make every dollar count. In mere weeks since the Commission report, we have reduced our deficit by $500 million, so the deficit now stands, Speaker, at $14.5 billion. It's going the right way. Ontario is deep in the red. Finance Minister Vic Fideli updated the province on the state of its books today, and he detailed some of the ways the Ford government plans to handle the cash crunch. Ontario's spring budget under the previous government estimated the deficit at $7 billion. Fideli says the province is actually $14.5 billion in the red, with no specific plan to get back in the black. And the PCs are cutting taxes. Workers making less than $30,000 a year will pay no provincial income tax. Those making between $30,000 and $38,000 a year will pay less tax than they're paying now. There are also spending cuts here, too. The PCs are scrapping three independent watchdog offices, the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario, the French Language Commissioner, and the Ontario Child Advocate, which investigates the treatment of kids in foster care or under the care of the Children's Aid Society. The Ford government is also extending the LCBO's operating hours. They'll now be open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. And the CBC's Mike Crawley joins us now from Queen's Park with much more. Hey, Mike, thanks for being with us. Let's talk about that deficit number. How many of the measures announced in this fiscal update actually address it? Yeah, for all of what we were expecting for this to be a big deficit-cutting exercise, it didn't actually cut the deficit all that much. A half a billion dollars, which, you know, a lot of money to you and me, but in the grand scheme of Ontario being in the red, it's not all that much. It's gone from $15 billion to $14.5 billion, uh, which is almost a, a rounding error in the, uh, in the scheme of things. So uh, it's one of the reasons for that is that uh, although they've saved some money, they're actually handing a lot back to people in tax breaks. And what about the, you, you mentioned the $500 million that, that, they, that they have saved or that they claim they have saved. saved. What do we know uh, about what makes the up, what cons, you know, constitutes that number? So the bulk of that stuff, Vashi, is savings from the elimination of the uh, cap and trade program here. So it's money that was to be spent from the revenue that was going to be brought in by cap and trade. And, and these are so programs that are not actually going to go forward. So it's, it's spending that they're not going to go and do. Uh, and again, the reason why the deficit savings is not all that great is uh, you, you mentioned the tax break about um, for the lower income earners. There's also a, a tax break that was kind of buried in here worth a quarter of a billion dollars to the highest income earners. They're basically rolling back an increase in, uh, or in uh, income tax for six-figure earners. And they've also cut, or that I think the, the news that you first broke, the scra they've scrapped three watchdog roles, the child advocate, the environmental commissioner, as we mentioned, and the French language. Commissioner, what's the reaction to that being like? Yeah, so the government's defense of this is that they're saying that the jobs that these people do are being uh, assumed by other independent officers of the legislature, like the ombudsman and the auditor general. Uh, but there's de definitely a lot of negative reaction uh, from the francophone community about cutting that French language services commissioner. There was also a cut to uh, a French language university that's now not going to be created. So there's a, a feeling among francophones here that the Doug Ford government doesn't care about them. On the environmental commissioner, that one in particular, uh, obviously huge reaction from the environmental community. And given that this is a government that is opposed to the carbon tax and that doesn't have a climate change plan of its own, it does say one's coming later this month, uh, that's being seen as uh, an, an attack on the environment. And I just have a few seconds before I let you go, but what about rent control? Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, very quickly, uh, rent control for buildings uh, that are built after today or new buildings that are converted into rental units after today, those will not be subject to rent control. So it's, uh, it's, it's stopping uh, as of today Existing buildings, those are all going to be covered by rent control going forward, but anything new constructed after today will be open market. Okay, thanks, Mike. The CBC's Mike Crawley from Queen's Park in Toronto. So how will today's measures fix Ontario's fiscal house? Vic Fideli is the Finance Minister of Ontario, and he joins us now from Queen's Park in Toronto. Hi, Minister Fideli. Nice to see you again. Bashi, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Balanced budgets are staples of fiscal policies for Conservatives. Your update has no plan to get back to a balanced budget. Why not? Well, we do have a plan to get back to balance, but uh, we'll announce that in the uh, 
uh, in the spring budget. That's when we're uh, required to. But right now, what we've shown is a complete change in direction of increasing deficits under the Liberals to uh, real relief for families, and we've reduced the deficit by half a billion dollars. But you've reduced a 14 point, I mean, it's from $15 billion to $14.5 billion. It's kind of a drop in the bucket. Well, we've also uh, cut expenses uh, and found savings of $3.2 billion, but we returned $2.7 billion back to the people of Ontario through tax cuts and other uh, forms of relief. So that's how we were left with a half a billion dollars in only a few weeks, mind you, that we were able to uh, reduce the deficit from $15 billion to fourteen and a half. So it's on its way down, and we'll have more to say about that in the spring budget. Before I move on, I want to just uh, ask you one more time about balancing the budget. I know you say that you'll announce yep. when in the spring. On May 23rd, Doug Ford said, we aren't going to balance the first year, maybe not the second year, but we will balance maybe the third or fourth year. Our goal is to balance the budget. Is it still going to happen in your mandate? Well, or have you I, given up on that idea? I call it the Goldilocks touch. You know, it can't be too soon or no one's going to believe it. It can't be too long because anybody can do that. It needs to be just right. So we will look at all of the issues and all of the finances available and all of the relief that we want to provide families. And we'll come up with a reasonable and a pragmatic schedule for balancing the budget. And we want to balance because we know we need the money to be able to pay for health and education in the future. During the election, your party promised to avoid cutting jobs, yet you've eliminated the Environment Commissioner, French Language Commissioner, and the Provincial Children's Advocate, and, and I'm guessing maybe some people in their staff. Doesn't that amount to job cuts? Well, we've actually not eliminated those. We've moved them into the Auditor General's office and into the... The, uh, the Commissioner's will keep their jobs, though. So uh, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, really uh, where Ontario was the only province that had an environmental commissioner. We follow the federal, uh, the federal government's model where they put the environmental commission in the Auditor General's office. So you can still call, uh, whether it's francophone issues or child and youth services or the environment, we still have departments within the Auditor General and the Ombudsman, people who are, you're more familiar with calling an Ombudsman, we still have those departments that are existing. Uh, so we're going to strengthen the Auditor General's office and strengthen the Ombudsman office to be able to uh, take in this extra work. Is there a net job loss as a result of this decision? Well, we know that uh, uh, based on the announcement today that we're going to be consolidating all of these offices. We'll continue to look for efficiencies, uh, but we know that uh, these positions are now going to be housed inside the uh, Auditor General and the uh, Environment and the uh, 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 Ombudsman. With respect, that doesn't answer whether there'll be jobs lost as a result of the decision. Will there be? Well, I would uh, imagine that uh, we'll be staffing uh, appropriately for uh, an enhanced work at the auditor's office and enhanced work at the uh, uh, Ontario Ombuds and the, uh, Ombudsman's office as well. So does that mean there'll be more jobs there? <laughs> Look, uh, this I'm, is I'm all ask, about and I'm asking efficiencies. In, in fairness, Minister, I'm asking efficiencies. because you promised not to cut so, jobs in the campaign. So there are, uh, there are, it's a consolidation and an amalgamation of all of these various uh, offices. You can still have, uh, uh, bring, lodge your complaints and still receive uh, the same kind of correspondence as you have in the past. But we're really looking for efficiencies here to make a, a tighter government. One other aspect of this is it takes the politics out of it. It takes it away from being a cabinet decision and puts it into the legislature. So it really will make a more robust Auditor General's office and a more robust uh, office of the Ombudsman. I have to ask you about some of the math in this. I mean, $14.5 billion deficit is not a small number. Cancelling a planned increase in taxes for high income earners, you cut taxes for low income Ontarians, $1.5 billion loss in cap and trade revenue. You say you've saved $500 million so far, but as we mentioned, that's not a lot compared to $14.5 billion. How do you do this? How do you, how do you, how do you move towards a smaller deficit, less de debt payments, all the things you and, your, and the Premier talk about without major spending cuts? Well, we found $3.2 billion in efficiencies in only the few weeks we've been in power. And so uh, let me give you an example. But you put 2.7 back. Well, yes, the people need relief in the province of Ontario. They've been taxed uh, by the previous Liberal government for 15 years, uh, which has caused uh, a tremendous trouble through, through our families when you have to decide whether to heat or eat. 
uh, whether it's your hydro bill, your natural gas bill through cap and trade, price of gas at the pumps, all of this now has relief for families, 2.7 billion. But let me tell you about an efficiency, just to, as a quick example. So OHIP Plus was one of these programs announced by the previous Liberal government. If you're under 25, you get free pharmacare. Well, it was over 700 million. What we've done is we understand that many families already have a benefits plan, especially if you work in the public service, you have one. So your benefits plan kicks in first now, and if you don't have that, the government uh, provides the funding for it. So here we are with OHIP Plus, everybody still has the same coverage as the day before, nobody lost a job, and we saved $300 million. That's an efficiency. In fact, that's 10% of the efficiencies that was found, and that was in our first week. So that's an example of where we're going. Before we go, I do have to ask you about a different topic. Patrick Brown says uh, in December of 2017, he's alleging in his book that he received a handwritten letter from a female staffer accusing you of inappropriate behavior. Have you seen that letter? Do you know it to exist? All I can tell you is I don't read fiction, so I've not seen Patrick Brown's book, but I can tell you that those accusations are false and malicious. So nobody, no female staffer that you're aware of levied a complaint against you when Patrick Brown was leader? I can tell you that all of that is false and malicious. He says he told you he would look into it. Is that false? I can tell you that all of that is false and malicious. It, the NDP has said that if there is some, some sort of complaint or, or something of that nature that there should be an investigation, would you cooperate with that if it were to be called? I think the Premier spoke about that this morning in the legislature rather strongly. Okay, I'll leave it there, Min Minister Fideli. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Bashi. Earlier this afternoon, I got reaction from the Leader of the Opposition. NDP Leader Andrea Horvath joins me now from Queen's Park. Hi, Ms. Horvath, great to see you. Thanks for coming back on the show. My pleasure as always, Bashi. Thank you for inviting me. So I, I would be, I would guess that you, you're not in favor, of course, of the, uh, of the cuts to commissioners and, and the watchdogs that the government came out with today. But I do remember during the campaign that you, you also flagged the Liberals sort of quote unquote bad math on deficits. Do you acknowledge that the government does have to do something to rein in spending or tighten its belt given the size and the severity of the deficit? Well, except that that's not what this government's doing. It, what it's doing is cutting services for everyday fam families to the tune of $3.2 billion, but then cutting taxes for the rich. And so it's really not getting us uh, anywhere. If they were serious about that, uh, uh, that uh, commitment around uh, getting the deficit down, uh, they wouldn't be cutting taxes for the rich. And so what we're going to see is the wealthiest amongst us here in Ontario uh, get some pretty great breaks, and everyday families are going to be paying more out of their pockets for the things that they need. We're going to see rent go up, even though we have a housing crisis in Ontario where, where folks can't afford a roof over their head, head already. Uh, and we're going to see things like uh, children's uh, services and, and services for those uh, most vulnerable uh, cut to, to, a, a, to the tune of about a billion dollars, the details of which we don't know. We also have a government that's getting rid of a universal Medicare, apparently, in Ontario. Again, uh, details aren't out yet, but these are not the things that families need. We've already been tightening our belts in Ontario families have been telling me they've been struggling and having a hard time. They need help. They don't need a government that's going to make life even harder. The government did, though, cut taxes for low-income earners under th those that, who earn an income under $30,000. In fact, there's, they will not pay any provincial income tax. Doesn't well, that fact, speak to what you're saying? No, no. In fact, two-thirds of those folks already don't pay any income taxes because they don't earn enough money to pay income taxes. So again, uh, the Ford government's not being honest about what they're doing. Uh, they're saying 1.1 million people are considered to be uh, low-income wage earners, but what they're not saying is that two-thirds of those folks won't qualify for the tax cut uh, because they, they don't earn enough to, to pay the taxes in the first place. So, What about fact, those between thirty and $38,000 a year? In fact, the tax cuts that are coming uh, with this uh, fall economic statement favour the richest amongst us uh, by two to one. It's the rich that are going to get uh, the breaks as opposed to everyday struggling families. That's not going to make this province a, a fairer, more equitable place, and quite, quite, in fact, quite the opposite. And, and worse, as the government uh, gets rid of universality, everyday families that are just, you know, trying to hang on and, and make life better for themselves and their kids are going to be paying more and more out of their own pockets. It, it, this is the wrong direction. It's going to hurt people. They're also saying, though, that those between earning between thirty and 38000 will pay less taxes, too. 
Well, again, uh, it, it, the, the, those folks, if they had gotten a $15 minimum wage, would be gaining about $2,000 annually. Instead, uh, the government's going to give a, a pittance of a tax break to some of those folks that might, might put them maybe two or $300 in their pockets, meaning they're still going to be out by about $1,700 annually. Again, it's not, it, this is not a, a fall economic statement that's going to help everyday people. It's a fall economic statement that's going to help the wealthy and going to help Doug Ford's well-connected friends, like his developer friends, who are going to be able to put any price they want on a newly built unit. And if you're here in Toronto, where I am now, everywhere you look, there's a crane in the sky. There's lots of new units coming on online. And I can tell you, those developers are pretty darn happy uh, with today's economic statement. Don't they have to do something, though? I mean, with a $14.5 billion deficit, they could have slashed spending a lot more using that argument that the deficit is so big. They didn't. They use words like pragmatic, like modest. They've abandoned any pledge to return to balance. Isn't that more along the lines of something you'd like to see? No, there's, there's nothing pragmatic about giving tax cuts to the rich. There's nothing pragmatic about making life harder for everyday families. Look, we just did come off of a campaign a couple of months ago, and people told me everywhere I went in Ontario, they're tired of hospitals uh, with people lined up uh, uh, in, in, in rows trying to get a bed. They're tired but did they, they didn't slash their, the budget for hospitals. Not, well, in fact, we, are, we haven't seen the details of what their $3.2 billion in cuts are going to look like. They're talking about cuts to Medicare. Uh, they're talking about you know, cuts that are going to mean everyday families are not going to have access to the services they need. They're cutting, likely, social assistance and, uh, uh, and Ontario disability support from our most vulnerable. They're getting rid of uh, people like the child advocate. Our, our watchdogs are being scrapped. Uh, our watchdogs for the environment, uh, for children Well, they're and being youth. folded into other offices. No. No, they're being scrapped. I mean, the reason that they've been uh, pulled out of those other offices, like the Ombudsman office in the first place over the years, uh, is because those areas needed some focus. I mean, children, they're voiceless. They're the most vulnerable amongst us. They deserve to have their own watchdog. And in fact, uh, it was the New Democrats that forced the Liberals to finally make that office independent uh, for the child advocate. And we were the last province in the country to do so. So this fall economic statement shows clearly that this government's taking us from bad to worse and dragging us backwards uh, and it's uh, it's not what people i think expected uh, when they uh, when they um, uh, they bought mr ford's line on um on, uh, you know, he's for the people. He's not for the people, he's for some people. Uh, he's for the wealthy and, uh, uh, you know, for developers, uh, for well-connected insiders uh, that he favors. I, I take your point about the lack of transparency around what, what the spending cuts will be, but I, but I wanted to ask you before I let you go, there is sort of a, th this idea about keeping the LCBO open longer. We remember Buckabeer uh, from a few months ago, I think around the throne speech. Yeah. Is it uh, effective political strategy to announce things like that, which I imagine a lot of people People I know will be talking about tonight rather than, for example, changes around cash, cash for access. Yeah, it's a tactic. I mean, it's a tactic that's used by all governments. Uh, you know, you look, uh, you, you throw out a shiny penny and hope that people pay more attention to the shiny penny. But might or it the... be effective? Uh, well, I mean, again, we, we've seen it be effective in the past, so it's possible it'll be effective now. Uh, but when those when folks in Ontario don't have uh, the money in their pockets to be able to go to buy a bottle of wine at 10.30 at night, uh, they're going to see really uh, exactly what this government's done to them. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Ms. Horvath. Thank you, Fashi.